Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to talk about real Christmas trees, and we'd like to thank Express Sewer and Drain for recommending our podcast on their plumbing blog. And you can check out their blog at expresssewer.com slash blog. The University of Idaho says one of the first written records of a decorated Christmas tree comes from Latvia in 1501. The idea of a Christmas tree was introduced to the U.S. by German settlers in the 1800s, and some of the first trees were tabletop trees. Mm -hmm. In 1901, the first Christmas tree farm in the U.S. was established in New Jersey. And now in the U.S., there are over 15,000 Christmas tree farms. Wow. 25 to 30 million live trees are sold every year in the U.S. Hmm. And they say it takes four to seven years for a tree to grow to six feet tall, depending on the species. Cool. What are the most popular types of Christmas trees? The Farmer's Almanac says there are 35 different species of trees grown especially for Christmas. The five most popular are balsam fir, Douglas fir, Fraser fir, scotch pine, and blue spruce. But what's available is going to vary depending on where you live. Okay. What are some features of a balsam fir? Balsam fir is very fragrant. It's pyramid or cone-shaped. The needles are soft and around an inch long, and a healthy tree is going to have dark green needles. It has good needle retention, and the branches have medium firmness, which is good for ornaments. Mm -hmm. Many Christmas candles are scented to smell like a balsam fir. Oh, interesting. What about a Douglas fir? The National Christmas Tree Association says a Douglas fir is one of the most popular Christmas trees. And like a balsam fir, it's very fragrant and pyramid-shaped. The needles are three-quarters of an inch to an inch and a half long, they're soft and bluish or dark green in color, and Douglas firs have good needle retention unless they're not watered enough. The branches have fair firmness, and Douglas firs in the wild can live 500 years. Wow. What are some features of a Fraser fir? Wow, they, that was a lot of Fs. <laughs> they have a good smell, and they're cone-shaped. The needles are around an inch long. They're soft they have a yellowish silver color on the bottom of the needles and a dark green color on the top of the needle. Hmm. Fraser firs have good needle retention, but they need water right away when they're cut down to prevent needle loss. Okay. The branches are medium firm and hold their shape well. Cool. What about a scotch pine? It has a good fragrance. It's cone-shaped. The needles are one to three inches long. It has stiff, sharp needles that are bluish green in color. It has good needle retention, and the branches are very firm. Cool. What are some features of a blue spruce? Wow, my voice sounds pretty cool today, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. So a blue spruce has an average fragrance. It's cone-shaped. The needles are sharp and stiff, and they're silverish blue in color. It has good needle retention and firm branches. What should you look for in a Christmas tree? Most fir, spruce, and cypress trees are going to hold their needles the longest. You're looking for a healthy green color. If there are a lot of brown needles or loose needles, just pick a different tree. <laughs> and tug on the needles. They shouldn't pull out easy. You can wrap your hand around a branch or multiple branches and pull your hand down over the branch and see how many needles fall off. Very few or no needles should come off. And the needles should feel flexible. The branches should also feel flexible. Shake the tree and see how many needles fall off. A fresh tree is only going to shed a few needles. Inspect the tree for thinning or browning areas. With a pre-cut tree, if it's brown or thinning, it can mean it's already drying out. Okay. Find a good shape for the space you're going to be putting it in and look at the tree from all angles. If you're in a tree lot where they have pre-wrapped trees, ask them to take the netting off so you can shake the tree and make sure it looks good and there's no thinning areas. Because what are they hiding? <laughs> right. 
Make sure the trunk size and the shape are good for your tree stand. That's important. Check the ends of the limbs if you have heavy ornaments. They need to be able to support it. Blue spruce and Fraser firs are good if you have a lot of heavy ornaments. Okay. Penn State University says the freshest pre-cut trees are farmed locally and harvested closer to Thanksgiving. So if you have a couple lots by you, you should ask when the trees are harvested. To check a pre-cut tree for freshness, look for flexible needles that remain attached when you pull on them. Evergreens shed their oldest needles, so don't be concerned with some brown needles from the interior of the tree falling off. Okay. Most pine and fir trees have the best smell. Fir and pine trees are going to hold their needles well, even if they get dry. Fir needles are soft and easier to hang ornaments and lights from. Cool. What should you bring with you if you're cutting down your own Christmas tree? You should have a tape measure so you can measure the trunk size for the tree stand you have, and you can measure the height and width to make sure it's going to fit into the area that you picked out in your home. Right. You should have gloves, a saw, rope, or bungee cords. A tarp is nice so you can cut the tree down, lay it on the tarp, and pull it to your vehicle or where you're going to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And then have a blanket or tarps if you're going to be putting this on top of your car. Oh, cool. Did you cut down trees as a kid? Never had a live tree. Really? No. It was fun. When my boys were young, we would go and cut a tree down. Seems so like a lot of work <laughs> in a big mess. <laughs> well, they just loved to run in the fields. It wasn't so much about the tree or picking the tree. Exactly. It was all about taking off in these just fields. Just take them to a field, JC. <laughs> yeah, Don't really. need to cut down a much tree. Much easier. <laughs> Any tips for cutting down your own Christmas tree? The University of Illinois says to measure the space where you're going to be placing the tree Know the tree stand height and what size trunk it's going to hold. You should also know the width and the height of doorways to make sure the tree is going to fit inside easily. <laughs> the base of the tree should be straight and six to eight inches to fit into a tree stand. Make sure you're wearing old clothes that you don't mind laying on the ground in. Right. Wear gloves. And if you're going to a tree farm, saws are usually provided, but you should check first. Okay. A bow saw is a good hand saw to cut down a tree, and bow is B-O-W. It's handy for cutting off branches also if you're going to compost the tree later. A bow saw has a bow-shaped frame that holds a thin blade, and it's going to cut through wood easier than a traditional hand saw. Mm. Most are 18 to 24 inches long. Some top-rated bow saw companies are Fiskars, F-I-S-K-A-R-S, Baco, it's B-A-H-C-O, Agawa, it's A-G-A-W-A, -A -A, and Gilmore, G-I-L-M-O-U-R. Exciting. Before you start cutting down the tree, check for birds' nests, bats, cats, rats, any other animals in the tree. And start cutting from a few inches off the ground, parallel to the ground. This is a good project for two people, one person holding up the bottom limbs so it's easier to cut, and you should be pushing away or pulling the tree away from the side that's being cut. Mm -hmm. That way the saw blade doesn't bind. You can also back cut the trunk to make it easier to cut through. What's that? A back cut is a cut you'd make on the opposite side of the trunk first where you would be finishing the full cut, and that way the trunk doesn't tear as easily or bind up the blade. Huh. Any other tips? The University of Illinois says to check if the farm has a machine to shake the tree. This is going to remove loose needles and insects. Oh, good. And if they have a machine for netting to wrap it around the tree to use it because it helps hold the branches together, it makes it easier to carry in or put on top of your vehicle. Right. If you are putting a tree on top of your vehicle, you should point the base of the tree forward so the bottom of the tree is at the front of your vehicle. This is going to help prevent wind damage to the branches. Oh. After getting your Christmas tree home, they recommend cutting a half inch off the bottom of the tree and put the tree in a bucket of water in an unheated garage or shed to keep it out of the wind until you're ready to bring it inside. Mm -hmm. The University of Illinois says research has shown that just plain water will keep a tree fresh. They say you don't need additives. It doesn't seem to add any life to a Christmas tree. Hmm. How often do you have to water a Christmas tree? The Old Farmer's Almanac says you should check your tree twice a day for the first week and keep the trunk in water. 
They recommend cutting an inch from the bottom of pre-cut trees before you set it in the tree stand. Trees form a seal on the bottom of the trunk after they've been cut down, and this will prevent the tree from taking in enough water. Huh. And as soon as you cut it, they say get it into water right away and never let the stand run out of water. Okay. Michigan State University Department of Horticulture says to keep a real Christmas tree fresh, get a freshly cut tree, make a fresh cut on the base, and keep the tree stand filled with fresh water. A tree can use up to a quart of water per day for each inch of the trunk's diameter. Huh. If you have a seven-foot-tall tree, for example, with a three-inch trunk diameter, it could use three quarts of water a day. Wow, that yeah. seems like a lot. It does. The National Christmas Tree Association says to make a fresh cut to the base of the trunk for pre-cut trees. Remove at least a half-inch thick disc. Don't make a V-cut or drill holes into the trunk. Place it in a bucket of water if you won't be putting it into the house right away. And if you are setting up your tree right away in your house, get it in a tree stand and add the water right away. All right. They also say to get a tree stand that fits the size of your tree trunk. Don't trim the sides of the trunk to fit a tree stand. It's going to negatively affect its ability to draw water. Hmm. The outer layers of the trunk are the best at taking in water. Wow. They recommend watering your tree daily, keeping the water reservoir full, most trees will stay healthy for four to six weeks. Wow, that's longer than I thought. How do you make a Christmas tree last longer? Well, the main thing is you want Probably to Probably make... not cutting it down. <laughs> yeah, get one with the roots and put it in a big pot. <laughs> so you want to make sure it's drawing up water. So I would set up the tree in the tree stand, fill it with water right away, and wait a day or longer before you decorate it. Right. That way you can see that it's drawing up water, because if it's not you should cut off another inch from the bottom of the tree. Which you're definitely not doing if you decorated it. <laughs> right. If you want the tree in the window, a south-facing window is the worst location. Hmm. If you're putting it in front of a window that gets direct sunlight, you should keep the window coverings closed during the day. A good humidity level in winter for a real tree is around 40%. Okay. The University of Texas says to make another cut across the bottom of the tree if it's been cut down for more than four hours. A seal of dried sap will form if it's not in water right mm. away. Turn off tree lights when you're not viewing the tree. Turn the lights off when you're away from your home or you're sleeping. Run a humidifier in the room with your tree. Only use LED lights to reduce heat on the tree and reduce the risk of fire. Right. Get a tree stand that holds a large amount of water to help prevent it from running dry. Keep the bottom two inches of the trunk always in water. Keep the tree away from heating vents, a fireplace, a space heater, a wood stove, or direct sunlight. You want to put your tree in the coolest place if you have options. Okay. The warmer the space is, the more water it will need and the quicker it will start to dry out. Right. What is Christmas tree syndrome? The Ohio State University says some people have a sensitivity to the sap in pine or fir trees or to pine pollen or mold spores when you're bringing in the tree or putting on decorations. Hmm. Some people will experience skin and eye irritation, sneezing or coughing, and sensitive people can have an asthma attack. Interesting. They suggest using a leaf blower on the tree before you bring it in or you can hose the tree down with a garden hose outside first, then let it dry off in the garage or outside before bringing it in, but make sure you put it in a bucket of water. Okay. What should you look for in a Christmas tree stand? Check the size tree it's rated for. Look at the width of the tree stand for stability. Wider is going to be more stable with a tall tree. The higher up the trunk the tree is supported, the more stable it's going to be. The National Christmas Tree Association says look for a heavy base, and it should have an opening for a four to six inch trunk for the average seven foot tree. Hmm. And if you're comparing different tree stands, get the largest water reservoir. Right. What are some top rated Christmas tree stand companies? Cinco, it's C I N C O, Jack Post, J A C K, capital P O S T, Crinner. K-R-I-N-N-E-R, -N -N -E Tree Nest, T-R-E-E, -E, capital N-E-S-T, and Goliath, 
G-O-L-I-A-T-H. How do you dispose of a Christmas tree? You can compost a real tree for your garden or landscape areas. Needles have a low pH and a waxy coating, so it does take a little longer to break down. But as they dry out and turn brown, they have a more neutral pH. The smaller you cut up the branches, the faster they'll break down. Don't burn a Christmas tree in your fireplace. It's going to create too much creosote, which can lead to a chimney fire. All right. The National Fire Protection Association says a dried-out Christmas tree is a fire hazard. Don't put a real tree in the garage or up against your home or leave a dried-out tree inside your home. A heat source too close to the tree causes one in every four Christmas tree fires. Wow. Firefighters are called to about 200 homes every year because of a tree fire. Hmm. You can check with your local community to see if they have Christmas tree recycling programs, or you can go to earth911.com to find a local recycler, and that's E-A-R-T-H, the number's 911.com. Check with your waste management company to see if there's any restrictions for picking up a real tree. Some communities have a special truck for waste that's not in a bin. Okay. So you'd have to call them ahead of time to let them know. Right. Some retail stores and home centers have tree drop-off days after the holidays. Hmm. And when you're removing your tree, you should wrap it in an old sheet, a tarp, or plastic. And that's going to help contain the needles so they're not drugged throughout your house. Right. <laughs> what are some safety tips for real Christmas trees? The National Fire Protection Association says to cut off two inches from the bottom of the trunk so it absorbs more water. Keep the tree at least three feet from any source of heat. Don't set up a tree where it could block exits in case of a home fire. Hmm. Only use lights that have been tested and approved by a recognized hmm. testing laboratory like UL. Right. Replace old, worn, or damaged lights. Read the recommendations on how many light strands can be safely connected together. Never use candles on a real tree. Always turn off tree lights when you leave your home or go to sleep. Keep a fire extinguisher close to the tree in case of a fire. And fall is a good time to check your fire extinguishers and smoke detectors. The American Red Cross says December and January are peak months for home fires. Wow. When doing the research for this episode, I saw there was a Christmas tree shortage last year. Mm -hmm. Will there be one this year? The Real Christmas Tree Board, which is a U.S. industry group, says there won't be a shortage this year. Extreme weather the last few years caused tree shortages in some parts of the country last year. Okay. Do you have anything else to add? I think that's a good overview. Make sure you cut off about an inch from the bottom of the trunk and get it into water right away. And keep the bottom couple of inches of the trunk always in fresh water. Right. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our ebooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, books 1 through 16 on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow Cindy on Twitter at fixitcohost. And you can follow us on Instagram, fixithomeimprovement. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Do you